Noble Review, Macroeconomics and Microeconomics, for use with introductory college macro and micro courses, as well as the AP macro and micro exams. In this podcast, we'll go over the top 10 concepts that you need to know unit by unit. Noble 7, Utility and Elasticity, Micro. Number 1, what is the relationship between total utility and marginal utility? As consumers increase their purchases of any product, their total utility or satisfaction from consumption initially increases at an increasing rate. At some point, the total utility will continue to rise with more units purchased, but at a decreasing rate. When the rate of increase slows, consumers are experiencing diminishing marginal utility. Lastly, as consumers continue to purchase even more quantities, the total utility will reach its peak and then eventually fall. The marginal utility curve is the slope of the total utility curve. That's the change in total utility divided by the change in quantity. Initially, marginal utility increases as quantity increases. This is known as increasing marginal utility, which is then followed by diminishing marginal utility. When marginal utility becomes zero, total utility is maximized. When marginal utility becomes negative, total utility falls. Number two, how do you calculate the utility maximizing combination of goods for consumers? When a buyer purchases two types of goods, we can determine the utility maximizing quantities of each good using the following equation. The marginal utility of good X divided by the price of good X should equal the marginal utility of good Y divided by the price of good Y. The ratios must equal one another. If you need the marginal utility divided by price to decrease, then buy more units of that good. This is because of the law of diminishing marginal utility. As you buy additional units, your marginal utility decreases. If you need the marginal utility divided by price to increase, then buy less of the good. Number three, how do you identify the area of consumer and producer surplus in a market? When a market is in equilibrium, the sum of consumer and producer surplus is maximized. A consumer surplus exists when the market price that a consumer pays for a product is less than what he or she is willing to pay. Suppose you are willing to pay $15 for a movie ticket and the market price is $10. You have a consumer surplus of $5. In a supply and demand graph, the area of consumer surplus is above the equilibrium price and under the demand curve. A producer surplus exists when the market price is greater than what the producer is willing to sell for. This is the area under the equilibrium price and above the supply curve. Number four, what are the determinants of the price elasticity of demand? In economics, elasticity translates to responsiveness. The price elasticity of demand measures how responsive consumers are to changes in the price of a good. The formula is percent change in quantity demand divided by percent change in price. When calculating the price elasticity of demand, we ignore the negative sign. Demands will be price elastic when elasticity is greater than 1. Goods with many substitutes and or goods that take up a large percentage of one's income tend to be price elastic. This means that consumers are sensitive to price changes. Demand is price inelastic when elasticity is less than one. Inelastic goods are necessities and or goods that take up a small percentage of one's income. This means that consumers are not sensitive to price changes. Number five, how is the slope of a demand curve related to the price elasticity of demand. The slope of a goods demand curve is not the same as the price elasticity of demand. For example, slope can be constant while the elasticity can change along the demand curve. At low prices along a demand curve, demand can be relatively price inelastic, and at high prices, demand can be relatively price elastic. However, if a good has a steep demand curve, the good's demand is more inelastic than a good with a flat demand curve. If a good has a flatter demand curve, the good's demand is relatively price elastic. Number six, what does a vertical and horizontal demand curve indicate about consumer responsiveness? 
there are two extreme cases of price elasticity of demand, perfectly inelastic and perfectly elastic demand. A perfectly inelastic demand curve is a vertical line. This means that there will be no change in quantity demanded when the prices change. Consumers are completely unresponsive. This can occur if a good is an absolute necessity and has zero substitutes. A horizontal line represents a perfectly elastic demand curve. This means that the slightest increase in price will lead to zero quantities demanded. Consumers are completely responsive. This can occur when there are many perfect substitutes. For example, a perfectly competitive firm has a perfectly elastic demand curve. Number seven, how is total revenue related to the price elasticity of demand? The total revenue test is a great way to estimate whether a goods demand is price elastic or inelastic. You need to see how the price changes relative to the total revenue. Total revenue is price times quantity. If price and total revenue move in opposite directions, consumers are responsive to changes in price, so demand is price elastic. That is, the elasticity of demand is greater than one. If price and total revenue move in the same direction, consumers are not very responsive to the change in price, so demand is price inelastic, or less than one. If total revenue is constant when the price changes, then demand is unit elastic, meaning it's equal to one. Number eight, how do you determine income elasticity of demand? The income elasticity of demand measures how responsive consumers are to changes in income. The formula is percent change in quantity demand divided by the percent change in income. If income elasticity is positive, then the good is a normal good. Luxury goods are greater than one and necessities are less than one. If income elasticity is negative, then the good is an inferior good. Number nine, how do you determine the cross price elasticity of demand? The cross price elasticity of demand is useful in determining whether two goods are related to one another. The formula is percent change in quantity demand of good X divided by percent change in the price of good Y. If the cross price elasticity between the goods is positive, then the goods are substitutes. If the cross price elasticity is negative, then the goods are complements. If the goods are unrelated, then the number should be close to zero. Number 10, how do you determine the price elasticity of supply? The price elasticity of supply measures how responsive sellers are to changes in price. The formula is percent change in quantity supply divided by percent change in price. If the price elasticity of supply is greater than one, supply is elastic. This means that sellers are sensitive to changes in price. When the price elasticity of supply is less than one, supply is inelastic. This means that sellers are not very responsive to changes in price. An elastic supply curve is relatively flatter than an inelastic supply curve, and an inelastic supply curve is relatively steeper than an elastic supply curve. The most important determinant of the elasticity of supply is the amount of time that the sellers have to adjust production. A longer period of time, or the long run, means supply is more elastic. A shorter period of time, or in the short run, means supply is more inelastic. Other determinants of supply elasticity include the availability of resources and the complexity of the production process. In Noble 11, we will see that sellers experience a greater burden of a per unit tax than buyers when the supply curve is more inelastic than the demand curve. That wraps up this episode of Noble Review's Top 10 Economic Concepts. Now for extra study resources, please visit my website at mrmedico.info. Thanks for choosing to learn with the Noble Review. Till next time.